This is Lesson 8 in Chaos, Fractals, and Dynamics, and today we're going to come up with a definition for the Mandelbrot set. Remember what we've been doing is iterating on f of x equals x squared plus c, always using a seed, a starting number of x equals 0, and we've made some discoveries. We've learned that if x is bigger than 0.25, you always have divergence, always goes off to infinity, if x is less than negative 2, we always have divergence. The interesting region for us has been between negative 2 and 0.25, including those numbers, where we do not have divergence. Sometimes we have convergence or eventual convergence to some particular number, and sometimes we have eventual cyclical behavior with any possible number of cycles. And we look at this with a bunch of different uh, software uh, programs. And um, at the end, last lesson, uh, we, we summarized it with this orbit diagram, also known as a bifurcation diagram. And we could see that from 0.25 down to right about there, we have a one cycle. Here we have a two cycle, eventual four cycle here. And things get really, really complicated in here. We have any possible number of cycles that you could ask for. And there are times when we can't tell how many cycles there are. And right now we're informally using the term chaos for that, although there is a much more formal definition for chaos. Okay. Uh, to develop the Mandelbrot set, we're going to take this graph and just look at the overall thing that's happening, which is that no matter how many cycles you have, no matter how many cycles you have, these numbers for C all have one thing in common in the iteration. They do not lead to divergence. They always lead to either cyclic behavior or convergence. And that's very important. So we're going to ask ourselves the question to develop the Mandelbrot set, to define it. One question we're going to ask, and one question only, for a particular number, a particular value of c, does the orbit diverge? If the answer is no, that's between negative 2 and 0.25, inclusive, it does not diverge, then the number is a member of the Mandelbrot set. If the answer is yes, it does diverge, then the number is not a member of the Mandelbrot set. So the real members of the Mandelbrot set are those numbers between negative 2 and 0.25, we don't care what they do, they can cycle around, they can converge, there can be chaotic behavior, but the deal is you don't go off to infinity, that puts them in the Mandelbrot set. So here's our conclusion. The real numbers in that interval are in the Mandelbrot set, and here's a graph of that on the number line. Now, what I want to do is show you the same graph, but instead of the number line, I'm going to put a two-dimensional picture of the complex number plane. So here's our real number line, and here are all the other numbers that are not real, the complex numbers. The imaginary numbers are along the y-axis, and numbers that are a combination of real and imaginary are located in each of the four quadrants. Notice now, instead of calling this number negative 2, I'm calling it negative 2 plus 0i. Instead of calling this number 0.25, I'm calling it 0.25 plus 0i. And instead of using x, I'm going to use the letter z to remind us that we're talking about complex numbers, all the complex numbers. So now, <clears throat> instead of iterating on a real function with a seed of 0, we're going to iterate on a complex function. We write the function the same way. We're going to put z instead of x to remind you that z could be a complex number with a um, value of y here, where y is the imaginary component that is non-zero. Our seed is still zero, but we'll also call it zero plus zero i, just to remind you of that. And we want to try different complex numbers in for c and see what happens. So let's do that now on the graphing calculator. First, I want you to, rem to remind you of how we did this on the graphing calculator before. We're going to go with a real number first, then we're going to go to a number with an imaginary component. We would always enter the seed, 0, enter, 
I'm rounding everything off to three decimal places to make it easier to see what's going on. And then we would put our function, but instead of x squared, we would put answer squared. Answer squared plus, and then whatever our value of c was, we put in here. I'm going to put negative 1.26. Enter. And it will iterate, plugging negative 1.26 in for the answer. And, um, I'm sorry, plugging 0 in for the answer. And we get negative 1.26. For the next iteration, it plugs negative 1.26 in for the answer. And so on. And you may remember, with negative 1.26, that's real close to a bifurcation point. The bifurcation points, uh, our first one was negative 0.75 then negative 1.25. And that second bifurcation point, we went from a two cycle to a four cycle. So negative 1.26 should be an eventual four cycle. Every time we hit enter, it plugs this answer back in and calculates. And we just go on and on and on until eventually we see a pattern. If you look at the four numbers, see the 0 0.086, 0 0.096, it's, we're jumping around a good bit here. And after enough iterations, we can see, see the 0.297 now. See, it's down here, the 0.295. There it is, 0.295. You can see it's settling down. We're getting the same four numbers over and over again in some sort of a cycle. So that's a four cycle. Okay. Now, we're going to do the same thing on our graphing calculator. But instead of plugging in a real number for C, we're going to plug in a complex number with an imaginary component. And I've chosen negative 0.2 plus 0.1i. Nothing special about that number, but it at least gives us something with an imaginary component. Note that I've already typed in my seed of 0. So we're going to iterate now. There's our first iteration, second. And we see that after, oh, oh half a dozen iterations, rounding off to three decimal places, I'm getting the same thing over and over again, negative 0.175 plus 0.074i. So it looks like negative 2 plus 0.1i, that value of c is an eventual one cycle, which means it's not escaping, it's not going off to infinity, and that means we've got a member of the Mandelbrot set. This is our first Mandelbrot set member that is a non-real. Point, negative 0.2 plus 0.1i. And to commemorate this moment, I've gone to my complex number plane here and I put a blue dot at negative 0.2 plus 0.1i, indicating that it has been allowed to join these real numbers in the Mandelbrot set. So if we've checked one number in the complex number plane, we just have an infinite number more to check. Okay, let's check a real easy one. Uh, one i. So we're going to plug one i into our calculator. Notice I have a seed of zero and I've got an answer squared plus i and I hit enter. Get i, negative one plus i, negative i, negative one plus i, negative i, negative one plus i. And so almost immediately this converges to a two cycle, to a two cycle. Because it's a two cycle, it's not escaping. Therefore, we have another member of the Mandelbrot set, i. And let's put that on our graph. There we go, zero plus i. Notice we didn't care whether it cycled one time, whether it converged. All we're looking at is, is it in the Mandelbrot set or not? Okay. Well, we found some numbers that are in. Let's see if we can find one that's out. And I'm going to cheat because I know which ones are in and out. Okay, what I have here now, again, I have a C to 0 and my answer squared. Do I'm adding that. Uh, to that, I'm adding 0 0.2 plus 0.6i. So that's the value of C that I'm checking, 0 0.2 plus 0.6i. Hit Enter. And... The numbers are still pretty small, but eventually, watch what happens. 
See that number in front of I? It's getting bigger. The real number is getting bigger. And at some point, it just starts growing like crazy. Growing without bound. And we will eventually get an overflow because we've gone beyond the limit of the calculator in terms of the size of number we can handle. Now, we don't say that this has gone off to infinity because, of course, we've got a two-dimensional uh, number here in a sense because it has a real and an imaginary part. Uh, what happens is, instead of thinking about going off to infinity, let's think about the distance from, from the origin of our iteration is going off to infinity. And I want you to imagine a circle here with a radius of 2 centered at the origin. It can be shown, we're not going to show it, but it can be shown that if your iteration gets outside of that circle, which means if the point gets more than two units from the origin, it's going to diverge. So we're going to use that as our criterion so we don't waste time letting it get bigger and bigger. Once the distance from the origin gets greater than two, we're going to assume that it diverges. And that's how we're going to count the number of iterations it takes to diverge. So if it gets outside of that circle of two and say three iterations, we'll say that diverged in three iterations. If it takes a thousand iterations, we'll say, well, it hung around for a while, but it took a thousand, a thousand iterations to get outside of the circle of two. So that's sort of an arbitrary uh, choice, but it's a good choice and it ensures that we get our results relatively quickly. So that point we just tested, going back to there, remember that point was 0.2 plus 0.6i. It's not in the Mandelbrot set. So I would not, 0.2 plus 0.6i is right about there. I would not put a blue dot there. I would leave that white because it's not in the set and we're only graphing the values that are in the set. You'll notice it's kind of interesting that i is in the set and 0.2 plus 0.6i, which is closer to the origin than i, is not in the set, which is kind of interesting. Okay, and that's it for this lesson. In our next lesson, we are going to investigate the behavior of all of these infinite number of points in each of these four quadrants that we have not, not investigated and try to get an approximate picture of what the Mandelbrot set really looks like. Till then, goodbye.